Good evening, everyone. This is Mr. Taylor with Young Engineers Today. I hope everyone is having a fantastic Wednesday evening. Uh, let's get moving. If you can hear me, please raise your hand. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Evan. Alex, hopefully you can hear me. Thank you, Taha. I see Katie just logging in. All right, we got it. Majority of the class. All right, put your hand up. If you can see my screen, which says Fly to Learn, Lesson 5 Thrust, please raise your hand. Okay, thank you, Anna. Thank you, Evan. Hopefully others can see my screen. All right. Thank you, Taha. You can see my screen and hear me as well. Fantastic. All right. Now, I'd just like to say thank you to everyone um, for your patience on Monday with my power going out and having to change the location of where I did the presentation um, at the local YMCA. Um, I'm very happy to be back at my home and doing it at my place, on my, own, on my desktop computer, in the comfort of my own home with and etc cetera, etc cetera. all right now the way the lesson's going to go tonight is we are going to um review last class lesson on drag and then after we review that we will go into our lesson on thrust this evening all right before we begin does anyone have any questions or concerns please raise your hand if you do No hands raised, no questions asked or typed in, so let's move on. Um, all right, drag, what we covered last class. Now, can someone tell me what is drag? What is drag? Can someone raise their hand and tell me what drag is? Yes, Henry. Drag is the um, force that is pushing back on the plane as it goes. Excellent job. Excellent job. Thank you, Henry. Um, yes, uh, Henry is 100% correct. Drag is the force that is pushing back on our airplane, as he said. It is opposing our flight path, and it is a force that our plane is always fighting. Okay? Now, um, Taha, you are correct. It pushes back on the plane. Great job, Taha. Uh, drag is unavoidable, ladies and gentlemen. It's always taking place. It always is uh, pushing down on or pushing back on our plane. Um, now, can someone tell me what the two types of drag are that we covered last class? Anyone tell me what the two types of drag are? Please raise your hand. Thank you, Taha, for participating. Um, Henry, I see your hands up again. Henry, can you tell me what the two types of drag are? Well, I don't have the, I don't have the answer, but I have a question. Does drag increase the faster you go? Um, the faster you go, as in regards to airspeed. Yes. Now. Um, with this lesson, um, uh, let me relate to the two types of drag. Uh, we have two types of drag. Um, as Taha said, there's parasitic drag. Can you, Henry, turn me down, please, on your computer? What? Can you turn me down on your computer? Getting a lot of feedback. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, 
we have parasitic drag and induced drag. Um, now, to answer your question, I, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe, no, you're going to have the same amount of drag because it's based off the amount of the airplane existing, which is parasitic drag. Uh, parasitic drag is just because the plane exists. It's still not changing the shape of what it is. But what we want to try to do is lower the amount of drag by making um, airplanes, cars, etc., aerodynamic. And this also increases our fuel economy. Um, and then we have induced drag where we try to create drag by um, cr we create drag by creating lift. It's a trade-off. Now, um, Henry, I believe that the, our drag uh, is going to exist depending on um, if we increase our flaps or decrease our flaps or lower our airspeed. Does that answer your question? I know yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. And what hap what, uh, what we'll do is um, on Saturday, uh, uh, I'll follow up Mr. Peter and get some more information as well, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you. Henry. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we went over our two types of drag. Last class, we, over went, we also went over flaps and how to use our flaps. Um, uh, flaps, ladies and gentlemen, as we used them last class, uh, help our plane slow down by increasing drag, but at the same time increasing lift. Uh, as we know that lift... Um, is a combination of, it helps get our plane off the ground, but it's a combination of Benelli's principle, which tell, states that when airflow over our wing, um, because it has to travel a longer distance due to the curved shape, it lowers the pressure but increases the velocity. But on the underside of the wing, on the below part, because it's a shorter distance, we have less velocity but higher pressure, so you get this push, pushing, is along with Newton's third law, which tells us that every action has an equal opposite reaction, where you have air pushing up, hit, hitting off of it, bouncing back, but the opposite reaction, the wing lifts. Now, what engineers have done to do to try to help with this process, they added flaps. This part curls off, so what happens is you have a, a increased curved wing surface. So the air is, the velocity is increasing to catch up with underneath, but what's happening is you're getting um, less pressure on top than previously. So, but this, which is increasing lift, but at the same time you have this area that's sticking out that is uh, changing my cord line that is allowing air to smack into that and causing drag. So you have this um, trade-off. And what happens is, you can slow down your airspeed by pulling out your throttle, decreasing your airspeed, but you're not losing lift. You're increasing your lift, but you're increasing drag. So you get this give and take of keeping in the air, but slowing down at the same time. So it makes an easy, smooth landing. Now, you had to fly, and we're going to go over the answers. Can someone tell me in your activity, you had to fly with the flaps up and the flaps down? Can someone tell me what their average airspeed was with their flaps up? You can either raise your hand and tell me or type in your answers. Katie. Thank you, Katie. Hi, Katie. What was your average airspeed? My airspeed was 106.5. Okay. okay. All right. Very good. Okay. Thank you. That was with your flaps up. Very good. That was with your flaps up. All right. And um, Evan typed in his average was uh, 160 to 180. Katie uh, and everyone else will, uh, I'll determine who the winners are. I've already looked. I'll let you know at the end. Okay. Oh, class. Now, can someone tell me what their average lift was on wing one? for when they had their flaps up. You can either type it in or raise your hands. And thank you, Katie and Evan, for participating. I appreciate that. I always like when people are participating.
What was the average lift? All right, Henry, thank you for raising your hand. Well, my average lift for wing one was 1,125.3. All right, excellent job. Thank you very much. All right, excellent. Uh, thank you, Henry. Katie, go ahead, Katie. All right, Katie. I had a totally different answer. I had 4,717. All right, for lift? All right, for lift? Yeah. Okay, and what was your drag for flaps up? Okay, and what was your drag for flaps up? Mine was 540. All right, excellent, excellent. Um, Thank you. Let's go right, with Henry. Excellent, excellent. Henry, can you tell me what uh, your average... Um, lift and drag work. What? What was your average drag? What was your average drag? With My flaps? average drag for flaps up? Yes, sir. 44.623 continuously. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right. Very good. Now let's move on to uh, flaps down. Can someone tell me what their true airspeed was for flaps down or type it in. Thank you to Henry and Katie uh, for participating. You're definitely uh, doing a great job. All right. All right. Um, so I guess we didn't have many people do this. All right. Uh, so all right, I'll just move on. Uh, I'll just answer it. With your airspeed, you should have seen a decrease compared to your flaps up, um, as well as your lift sh should have seen an increase and a drag should have seen a decrease. So let's go with answer the questions. All right. Now, when do you deploy flaps or lower flaps, what does what happens to your drag when you do this? Can someone answer that for me? What will happen to your drag? Yes, Henry. Yes, Henry. Your drag will increase. Excellent job, Henry. Um Thank you, Henry. Uh, while you're at it, because no one else is raising their hand, so we'll just keep going with you. Uh, thank you, Nathan. You can save drag increases. Henry, can you tell me what will happen when uh, you lower the flaps? What will happen to the airspeed? It'll decrease. Decrease. Very good. All right. Thank you. Um, thank you, Henry. And Alex, can you answer my next two? Alex, um, when you... Lower your flats. What does the lift do? The lift increases. Excellent job. And Alex, can you answer my last question? Why would it be dangerous to land a plane with the flaps if the flaps are only increasing drag but did not increase lift? Because you would crash. You would crash. Excellent job. Excellent job. Thank you, Taha, for answering in as well as Nathan. Thank you. Appreciate the participation. Thank you, Alex. Okay. All right. Um, thank you to those who participated and did their uh, assignment. Uh, it always makes it um, more engaging when we can participate together. Um, to those who didn't, please catch up, and you can do it before Saturday. Uh, now, let's go to our to this today's class topic. All right, thrust. 
The name of today's lesson is thrust. It's all about altitude. All right. The two major topics we're going to be looking at is thrust and landing. All right. Thrust and landing. Katie. Um, Katie asked if I will be there Saturday. Katie, you're on mute. You asked if I'll be there Saturday? I didn't have a question. Oh, no, I was answering the question. At lab. I will be there on Saturday, Katie. Okay? Okay. All right. I was just answering a question that you typed in. All right. Thank you, Katie. Now, um, we've gone over lift, we've gone over drag, we've gone over gravity. Um, thrust is the force that is pushing our plane forward. Uh, it is opposing drag. Now, uh, thrust is a force that helps pilots overcome drag. Uh, thrust also determines the altitude of our plane. You climb or descend by adding or subtracting thrust. Today, tonight in this lesson, you will learn how the plane makes thrust and also how thrust will help you land an airplane. I, I, one of the first things we'll do is practice landing. And I state that takeoffs are optional, but landing are mandatory because you can choose three nautical miles final approach. So we can... Um, get a better understanding and practice of the landing procedures, okay? All right, now, as I stated, thrust overcomes drag. It's very important. Um, thrust determines the altitude. As we said, if you increase your thrust, you can climb higher, you lower it, you can de um, go lower. Now, with landing, uh, landing, uh, we reduce thrust by reducing the throttle. Now, I want you to, to listen to this and look. Uh, this is on the Cessna. And you'll be doing this uh, shortly. When you push the throttle in, we know that we get our engine turns on, we move faster, our RPMs go up. Now, this instrument uh, tracks our RPMs. One of the ways we can help land is by reducing our RPMs by pulling out the throttle. So what happens is in the arrow, that's the cockpit view. It's pointing at the instrument in the bottom, and then it has the instrument a little bit closer, and you can tell where it's located. It's kind of near the throttle. And then here it is. What I want you to notice is that the RPMs is on 1,800. We want to get it down below 1,800. Um, you can get it down to 1,600 too. It helps. But it's... The, each line is by a hundreds. And it literally just goes, one, one, uh, it goes 100, 200, 300, 400, has it marked at 500, then it goes 600, 700, 800. It's marked at 1,000, um, 11, and then it has 1,100 all the way up to 1,500. And then it goes to uh, 2,000, 2,500, et cetera, all the way up to 3,000. So you can track how many RPMs, and you'll be using that instrument tonight. Okay? If everyone can see where that instrument is, raise your hand if they understand. All right, excellent, Alex, Anna, Evan, Kaya, Nathan, Taha, very good. All right, now, when you're landing, we're using that uh, RPM instrument, as well as you want to keep the wings level. If the wings are moving all over the place, it's hard to keep in control as well as you're changing the airflow of the wings. The next thing we're going to use is the PAPI lights. Um, these are precision approach path indicator lights. If you've ever been uh, near an airport and you'll see these like red and white blinking lights that are at the end of runways, those are PAPI lights. I saw these growing up near because I grew up not too far from um, Pittsburgh International Airport, and I would see them from the highway, as well as when I go to Charlotte Douglas International Airport, I see them from the highway as well when planes are landing. If you ever watch the planes land, you can see these lights, especially at night. Now, these PAPI lights are very useful because they determine your landing precision. The first thing being, uh, if they are all white, like they are in this image, if they are all white, 
you're flying in too high. You're going to overfly the runway, all right? So if they're all white, we don't want that. They're just way too, you're way too high. You're not low enough and you're not coming in correct. The second is um, all red. If you're all red, you're flying in way too low. Uh, your pre precision approach path indicator lights, they're, you don't want them all red. It means you're going to fly too low and you're going to crash into the ground. Okay. Um, the next thing is the where we want them. We want them half white and half red. It means you're on target. Kind of reminds me of Goldilocks and the Three Bears because it's the all white is the porridge being like too cold. It's just too cold. You're too high. It's not gonna. It's not gonna work. And then all red, it's like when the porridge was too hot. Um, they're all red. It's hot. Not good. It burns. Uh, you're going to crash here. Um, but when they're half white and half red, they're just right. Um, that's just that perfect porridge right there. Now, there's a phrase that I've learned along the way that helps me remember how these are. Um, if they're all white, overflight. And you're going to fly over the runway. If you're all red, you're dead because you're going to crash into the ground. So all flight, all white, overflight, all red, you're dead. Uh, and it'll help you uh, determine those happy lights. All right, Anna, you have a question. Okay, I have a couple questions. The first one is, how do you get the lights to turn on? The happy lights, they, they're part of the runway. They just turn on naturally when you're uh, approaching the runway. Mm -hmm. So are we still using Laoi Airport? Yes, yes. We're going to be going over that momentarily in the video. Okay. Okay, what's your next question? And my next, quest next question is, how do you change from one plane to another? Uh, under airplane, you change your airplane, and then in the top tab, you go to um, uh, general, you click on it, click on general aviation. And then down below, you have a list of different aircrafts. And you click on one, and then you click on it again. Okay. Aircraft. Go to um, air. You clicked on go to aircraft. Aircraft. Open aircraft. Open aircraft. Yep. Um, general aviation. General aviation. Now, you see all the airplanes down below that are listed? Uh, Cessna. Click on Cessna. Now you should have another tab that says Cessna. Click on it again. Wait. Oh. Wait. Hold on. Settings. Okay, one second. Airplane. Okay, can you say that again? Because it's not working. The computer isn't letting me. So Cessna 17 2SP, right? All right, click on it. Now you'll see another Cessna thing. It'll say Cessna 2 something. Click on it again. And then it'll open up and you'll be back in the quick flight setup. And if you don't know how to do this, you can always go back how okay. to set this up. There's a video on Edmodo. Okay, apparently now it's loading, so... Okay, good. You're on the right track. Excellent job. Thank you, Anna. Alex, how can I help you? So, I was wondering, how do you reset it to, like, I accidentally played around with it a little bit, and to made it so that when I hit the ground very hard, it will not reset. How do, how do I fix that? I, I have no idea. I'm being honest with you, Alex. Um, from the standpoint of it, the thing is there's not a reset button in this because it's not a game. 
So yeah. you're, you're going to have to go in and check all your settings that you changed. Okay. Okay. Um, I would go in, I would start off with quick flight setup and just double check all your settings in that. And then I would go to some of the other settings to check like your gravity and what planet you're on and all that. Yeah. Okay. I can basically tell you what you have to go look at, but I can't tell you exactly what to fix because I don't know what you did, to be honest. Does that make okay. sense? I know that's yeah. like not a great answer. I but... clicked the button reset on hard crash. It had a check and I unchecked it. Okay. Yeah. Because that's the thing. Like I, when I, and I've said this before, it's, we get so used to playing video game, video games reset that we take it for granted that when we use a simulator, simulators don't have a reset button in this yeah. case. Does that help, Alex? Yes. I'm sorry it wasn't a great use there. I kind of feel worthless to you, but... Um, oh, no, that actually helped. I knew where to look. I know where to look now. Yeah, yeah. You just got to make sure that things are checked. Because, uh, and, I've had, and I understand it's just harder when I'm not looking at it because I can typically look and see what to look for. Yeah, I've had people where I've literally, because I teach during the day, where I've had kids just, they're just experimenting, but they mess things up so much that I literally had to uninstall x and reinstall it. Oh, wow. Because it just went and started checking and unchecking, and, and it was just like, I spent more time trying to fix it that I could have just deleted it off the computer and reinstalled it. It was quicker. You get what I'm saying? But All right, thank you, Alex. All right, now, ladies and gentlemen, um, we're going to go and watch this next video and it's going to teach us how to fly or land. All right. And then we're going to practice. Okay. All right. Okay. Today we're going to try out landing. As always, the first step is to check our setup. Our airport should be low -y. We should choose final approach, three nautical miles. Our aircraft should be the Cessna 172P, and time should be eight o'clock and weather clear. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're still flying at Lowy. This is our quick flight setup. The only difference is we're clicking on three nautical mile final approach for one way eight. And it's literally right where my cursor is. You click on that. Instead of hitting go to this airport, when you click on go to this airport, it literally goes to the airport runway. We want to click on three nautical miles and then go up and click the X. This will allow us to uh, take off. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I cannot turn the volume up anymore. I have it on max volume to the point where it's actually shaking my iPhone on my desk. Um, so turn up your volume on your end. I have it maxed. Today we will be practicing two kinds of landing, basic and full flat. To begin with, let's try basic. First, we put the plane into level flight. And then reduce the throttle until the engine runs at 1600 RPM. Keep the winds level and maintain the airspeed around 85 knots. Be sure to watch our altimeter and our vertical speed indicator, as well as your PAPI. The PAPI or the uh, lights at the beginning of the runway, or the precision approach path indicator. All red means we are too low on our approach. Half red and half white means we are on the right approach. All white means that we are too high on the approach. Try to maintain a correct flight path by adjusting the throttle. Once we touch down, lower the throttle and apply brake. We should repeat this until we can land the plane on the runway every time. All right, what I want you to do now, um, I want you to go practice. I'm going to give you about 10 minutes. Just practice landing. 
Uh, if you understand what you need to do now, raise your hand. I mean, if you understand what you're supposed to do, raise your hand. Thank you, Kai, Nathan, Taha, Katie. Excellent, excellent job, everybody. Okay, put your hands down. All right, go ahead and do it. If you have any questions, please raise your hand. Yes, Anna. Um, should we? Whoa, sorry, I didn't expect it to bring me up in the air. Um, but um, do we just fly around for a little while? No, I want you to try to land. That's the point. I mean, like second. fly around and then try to land. You're not trying to fly around. You're literally. You can see the runway in front of you. You need to mm -hmm. um, check your RPMs, put your throttle in, and try to land. That's what you're practicing okay. right now. Okay. We're not practicing right. flying. We're practicing landing. All right. Thank you, Anna. Um, yes, Brendan. Brendan, you have your hand raised. Oh, hold on. All right. Katie. Katie. Which ro runway are we on? Which three. Ro runway are we on? Runway eight, three nautical miles. What? Katie, you're getting a lot of feedback. Uh, the runway you need to be on is runway eight, three nautical miles. So you have, you'll see the tab for runway eight. It's right next to it on the right. It'll say 3NM, and above it, it'll say Final Approach. Click on that, and then click on the X. Yes, Brendan? Um, I'm still on the demo version, and on the um, in Lowy, will I find, where would I find some place to land? Do I just turn around and land back at the same Did place? Did you click on 3 Nautical Mile Final Approach for runway? But where like, where am I going to land? Because we're kind of, we're on the ocean here. We're on an island, so where am I going to land? Do I just land? I, you're, you're, I don't know where your setting is. You have to be at Lowy. Have you, I am. All right, then there shouldn't be any oceans or islands. Did you change the location? No. We can go check. I can go it, check though. Okay, check that because if you change your location, settings. Um, quick flight setup. Yeah. What's your runway? Or your airport? Excuse me. Um. Let's see. Oh, that might be it. Hold on. Innsbruck, Crane Bitten. Okay, that's Germany. That's Lowy. Uh, abbreviations L O W I. Is that correct? Yeah, that's for, that's the correct airport, Brendan. Let's see. Let's pull this back. I need to. Mountain, that's not me. That's the video. Yeah. Um. Have you seen what happens when you click on three nautical miles, Brendan? I don't have that on any of that on mine because I still have the demo version. It's, it, it's in the demo version also. It's under your quick flight setup. Let me right here. Let me show you. You see this screen? Yes. Right here where it says take off final approach. It's in your quick flight setup. RWY stands for runway. And you okay. have runway eight. That's the one we were using to take off. Right next to it is a button that says 3NM. Three NM. Three. Click, click on 3NM. And this is exactly what they show you in the video. After you click on 3NM, go up to the X and click that. Okay. But where is my quick flight set up? Under settings. On the instructions. 
It's under okay. settings. Yeah, we have the instructions. Oh. Yeah, we can do it. We have the instructions. We're okay. Gonna... Yeah, it's under settings. Okay. We'll go there. Okay. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, back to settings. All right. I got you on the plugin. All right. All right. How's everyone doing? Anyone land yet? Yes, Katie. How's everyone doing? Anyone land yet? Um, well, my brother said, yes, my brother told me to tell you that he landed, but I have another question. When we went to um, runway eight, it took a long time to find a runway. Okay. Like we you, had to go far away. Did you click on three? Find the runway. Did you click on three nautical so miles? I, Katie, let, let me finish. Did you, you click, click on, on three, three nautical miles or ten nautical miles? Katie, let me finish. Did you click on three nautical miles or ten nautical miles? Three nautical miles. Then it should be right in front of you if you clicked on runway eight. Then it like, should be right in front of you if you clicked on runway eight. I'm gonna try again. I mean, you can okay, see the I'll runway. Thanks. I mean, you can see the runway. Let me show you. Oh, yeah, now he's got it. Okay. You. you probably accidentally clicked on, on 10 okay. nautical miles. You probably accidentally clicked on, on 10 nautical miles. Wait, no, it's not working. Guys, you, look at my screen. You see you this? Clicked on three nautical miles. Guys, look at my screen. You see this? Yes. Can you see the runway can right see here? Can you see the runway right here? Where my cursor is. Where my cursor is. Yeah, he sees that, but it's really foggy in our screen. Oh, you need to change your weather. You didn't update oh, your weather. Oh, you need to change your weather. You didn't update your weather. You need to put it on on your uh, okay, C A B O K. Put it on on your uh, C A B O K. What? Your C A B O K. The same thing we've been doing every class. Your C A B O K. Same thing we've been doing every class. Okay. You have to, you have to put that on Thanks. clear. You have to you have to put that on clear. Under quick flight okay. setup. Okay, thank you. Okay. Under quick flight setup. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Anna. Oh, um, it wasn't starting for me, but I only just got it to pull up on loading, so. Okay. But thank you. Thank you. Taha. I landed. Nice job, Taha. Great job. Try it again. Try it again. Okay. Good job, sir. Kaya. I I landed, but awesome. um, but I put the brakes on too soon. So I went off the runway and I and I skid to a halt near one of the um one of the buildings. Okay, okay. Well, uh, try this. Put your brakes on sooner, as well as soon as you hit the ground, pause it and pull your throttle all the way out. Okay. Well, I um I did that, but um yeah. and. Then lower your throttle more as you're on your final approach. Okay. Okay? All right. Thank you, Kai. Good job. All right. Let's go with Evan. Evan. Unmuted. I, um, I'm at Lowy, and I put it on number 08, and I put three nautical miles final approach, and it spawns me on the, um, on the airport. Because you probably, um, what you're doing, you don't want to click on go to airport. You After you click on three nautical miles, click on the X in the upper screen. Oh. So, wait, yeah. Come Whoa. You're in the air. Pause it. Yeah. It's like. Can I help you with anything else? Yeah, I'm good. It is half red, half white. That's what you want. That's what you want. All right. Um, raise your hand if you need anything. 
I'm going to give you guys about, I don't know, about I landed eight. again. Awesome, Taha. You're turning into a beast. Good job. Good job. Keep it up. All right. Anna, how can I help you? Okay. Apparently, the pro um, a problem caused my program to stop working correctly. So shut it down and reopen it. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you, Anna. Um, one of the issues with using Xplain at times, depending on your processor, your graphics card, it can make your computer lock up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Anna. Taha landed again. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's take about another minute of uh, practice and landing. And then we're going to uh, review one, going to watch one more short video clip that's going to show you how to do something else and go over the lesson for uh, Monday. All right, um, please raise your hand if you attempted to land or landed. Please raise your hand. Okay, great. So many hands went up. All right, what we're going to do now is watch our next uh, video lesson on how to get things up and rolling. Okay, now... And this will show you how to take landing to the next level. Put the plane into level flight and reduce the throttle until the engine runs at about 1500 RPM. Keep the wings level and reduce the airspeed to less than 85 knots. Deploy full flaps and add or remove throttle to stay on the proper approach according to the pathy. Once you touch down, lower the throttle and apply brakes. Again, we should repeat this until we can land on the runway every time. Once you are comfortable with both landings, there are questions to fill out on the handout, as well as another challenge, the chance to land at sea on an aircraft carrier. To do this, select Settings and click on Quick Flight Setup. Choose KSAN, San Diego International Airport. All right, KSAN, that is airport. I'm gonna type out those initials so that everyone has them. I sent them out to everyone. All right. Final approach, three nautical miles. Three nautical miles. You see how you clicked on three nautical miles? Aircraft, Cessna 172P. Time, eight, and weather, clear. That's the thing. We. At this point, you should be setting up your plane, setting up your airport, knowing how to use quick flight setup like a snap of your fingers, all right? Because we do it constantly, all right? Then press X to exit. See how she pressed the X. She didn't hit go to airport. And click on file. Go up to file. Select load situation. Load situation. Aircraft carrier approach. 
aircraft carrier approach. It's labeled. And you'll see the aircraft carrier in front of you. Okay. Now, what I want you to do now is go ahead and do this. And on your handout, what you're going to do in this lesson is go through it. And what I want you to see is that, hey, maybe you can't keep up or you're not an auditory or visual person. In the lesson plans, it has every bit of information that is that is in the videos. So you can read it and it shows you step by step on how to set up everything and how to work it. Now, you have some questions you want to answer. Please go ahead and do that. And then it shows you how to take it higher to fly in San Diego and it shows you everything you need to do. Secondly, I already posted this PowerPoint today as well as the PDF for today's lesson, landing one and landing two videos in the PowerPoints. Okay? You have everything and more to help you out. Furthermore, I will be having the PowerPoint, uh, not PowerPoint, but the webinar presented. If you understand what you're supposed to do now, raise your hand. Excellent, Kaya, Nathan, Taha. All right, Evan, Henry, Katie. Very good. Nathan, I hopefully you understand as well. And Nathan, great job. Kaya, great job. All right, go ahead. I'm here if you need help. Um, and just keep flying. And work on this lesson. If you need help, raise your hand. I'll help you out. Yes, Anna, how can I help you? Okay, I've just figured it out, but when I press my three nautical miles, it was like a computing error of some sort. It turned um, my time of day all the way down to 24. So I was flying at in the night oh, trying okay. to find an aircraft carrier. It was very brightly lit, though. So. Yes, they are brightly lit for, for that the exact purpose, so you can find them. All right, thank you, Anna. Yes, Kaya, how can I help you? Uh, I typed in what you um, sent to us, and it says Ta Talladega Mooney. What did you type in? K-A-S-N. You have it backwards, K-S-A-N. Okay, oh. Thank you. You're welcome.
Taha, how can I help you? I crashed. Yeah. Well, go to Quick Flight Setup and do it again. All right? Yep. And okay. We all, we all crash. I crash probably more times than you want to know. All right? <laughs> all right. Thanks, Taha. All right, Kaya. My hand was raised from the last time I raised my hand. Oh, okay. Thanks, Kai. Evan. Unmuted. I just wanted to say that I landed. On the aircraft carrier? On the aircraft carrier? What? On the aircraft? Yeah. On the aircraft? Awesome. The aircraft awesome. Carrier. That's sweet. That's Great sweet. job. Great. Brendan, how can I help you? I almost landed because I'm still on this island thing in the San Diego airport, but I oh, almost hey, time landed. Out, time out, time out, time out, time out. Um, the reason you're on this island thing, what you need to do, you have to go to um, load situation and load the aircraft carrier. Okay. That's what you didn't do because you're probably. But I, I never got to. All right. Anything else? Uh, yes, I almost landed, but my I almost mean it's a pretty big runway, but I'm still trying to learn how to control, and so I got a little too far, and I and I almost landed, but right when I would have landed, I ran out of runway. Hmm. Oh, no, no big deal. Keep on trying. So I need to, I'm going to work on it. I'm going to, I mean, I've been practicing this many, many days or pretty much every day of the week. Oh, yeah, it takes time. I'm not doing webinars, trying it's, to get the feel for it. takes time. If it, if it was I'm that still having time getting used to it. It's hard to, I think it's hard to turn. Everyone would be a pilot if it was that easy, you know what I mean? Yes. All right. Thank you. Yes, Anna. I just wanted to tell you that I'm almost landed. It's just that I that I hit the um, aircraft carrier in the wrong way. Oh, it's okay. I've flown right into the side of it before, so no big deal. Good job. Keep trying.
Yes, Katie. Unmuted. I was like landing and then and then I was like on the thing and then I did it on brakes and it wouldn't stop. And then I finally put it on F2 and then I ran into the ocean. Hmm. Yeah, no big deal. I've flown in the ocean. Oh. Yeah, the runway wasn't long enough. I was about to stop. I was so close to stopping. And then I ran into the ocean. Ah, but oh. if um, the runway had kept going, oh. I would have landed it. Oh, good, good. So that Keep... kind of counts. Keep it up. Oh, Keep it up, good. Katie. Todd. I landed. Great job on the aircraft carrier. Good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Proud of you. Keep it up. My wheels, my tires got busted, though. Oh, it happens. I've spun in circles and hung off the side of it before. Well, you still got on it. Yeah, I like your attitude. Thanks. Good job, Todd. All right, bye, Alex. Oh, you crashed. Kaboom, says Brendan. You need anything? I'm I'm here to help. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we got about a minute left of class. Um, what I want you guys to do over the time is make sure you finish up any of your lessons with, um, with X-Plane. We'll review X-Plane uh, lesson on five on Monday of next week. To those in Raleigh, you have a lab this Saturday at the Science House. And uh, Mr. Dubik and I will see you then. All right, uh, if you have any other questions, please ask. If not, um, hopefully everyone has a wonderful evening. Thank you for doing very well. And remember, uh, make sure you do your lessons because it makes everything easier, okay? And we have the videos and everything in it online for you to see. Yes, Anna. Um, I'm just telling you, I almost landed, except I ran off the aircraft carrier. Hey, it takes time. You're gonna be you'll you'll be great at it before you even know it. Okay. Thank you. And then I cross into the sea. <laughs> Kaya, how can I help you? Do we have to bring the discs back? No, you the those are yours to keep. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Brendan, how can I help you? What time is the lab at on Saturday? In the morning still? Yeah, it's still the same time. Okay. All right. Thank you, Brandon. Taha. Oh, I forgot to put my hand down. Sorry. All right, no problem, dude. Thanks, Taha. Katie. Uh, okay, unmuted. I have two questions. Will we be doing this next week? Uh, no. We're going to be uh, moving in. To wrap uh, up. I gotta really check. Um, I gotta um, check the calendar. So we're next week because it's our last week.
and it's our last game. Who won the picture contest? Oh yeah, who won? Um. Oh, by the way, my brother posted. Oh yeah, one. who won? Um, my brother posted one too. Okay, let me uh, check. When did he post it? Okay, well, let me uh, check. When did he post it? Uh, before, like ten minutes before class. Okay, here it is. Um, okay, uh, the winners okay, were uh, Sarah. I couldn't uh, find mine. Mine was in the uh, Sarah and Jean Marc. And Jean Marc. They're students from. Uh, mine was like in the dark. The students from. Uh, But I was very impressed with the photographs I got. Everyone did a great job. But I was very impressed with the photographs. Keep it up. Everyone did a great job. Uh, yeah. Keep it up. Thank you, Katie. And let's go with Anna. Yes, Anna. Bye. Bye, Anna. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, have a great night, everybody. And as always, thank you for being part of Young Engineers. Enjoy the rest of your week. Bye-bye.